Awesome. Thank you. Well, first, I'm really excited to be here with you guys. This experience, super lighthearted. Definitely grab your notebook because I'm sure there's going to be a lot with that. And I know that there was a handout, I think, that is also available to you guys. So everything that I teach today is an invitation. I'm sharing from my own experiences and the things that I'm seeing in the yoga industry and from working with so many different organizations and training yoga teachers, but also something that I think is really important as we go into this is anything that doesn't resonate with you, let it go. And the things that do, dive in. The handout that is that comes with this is also going to give you guys tons of action items. So as you're in this, really allow yourself to just welcome your energy into the room. And we are going to begin. Let me share my screen with you guys. Melissa, while you're sharing your screen, everyone, I just dropped the handout in the chat. Um, so you can access it there. We will also be sending it in the recording as well. So if you can't access it now. Yay, awesome. Okay, so we are gonna dive in because we have an hour and I know that we're gonna make space for questions at the end. So know that those are gonna be addressed later and I have a tendency to tangent. So I'm going to focus and use the slides and use the notes, um, but we are going to be able to answer your questions as they go. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is clarity because a lot of issues that we see in the yoga industry is people are often taking all these external impressions and trying to model what they're seeing happening and what it means to be a yoga teacher. I want to point out that yoga, obviously, we all know means union. It is a unionship, not just with our own practice and ourselves, but our own medicine. And so it says here, clarity, clarity to foster uh, good ideas, inspiration, and to grow your work to also establish a livelihood because today is also about business, turning your passion into your profession. So our way ahead, the way that this is gonna be organized is that we're gonna look at some things happening in the industry, some things that are changing in the industry, but then also fostering these things within yourself, the clarity and really looking at where it is that you wanna play in the yoga industry and a lot of up and coming opportunities that are happening because of these changes that are occurring. And clarity is so important because, you know, when you think about confidence, when you think about direction, and most importantly, when you think about integrity, clarity is going to be the foundation of all of that. Because when you're clear about what it is that you want to provide, what it is that your mission is, what your services are, and what you stand for, it allows us to be confident in how we show up. It allows us to have perception and perspective in the way we walk in our journey with this work. It's going to show us what's out of alignment and what is not in alignment. And I know that's a fluffy word that's often used, but what I mean by that is, is it authentic to you? You know, the confusion that can happen is we feel in the industry like this is what I should be doing or this is what a good yoga teacher is. And then we're getting overwhelmed because we are trying to also have a livelihood so we can feed ourselves and give from a place of have. So being able to anchor back into the clarity of what is it that we're even, where are we even going to play? So this leads us to this next part. So where are we in the yoga industry? Over the past 15, 20 years, there has been so many changes, and I started teaching in 2011, 2012 was when I really got into teaching in studios and starting getting into the community, and you know, back then it was the yoga studios were starting to pop up everywhere. I remember in the 2000s, right, it was kind of, I mean, depending on where you lived, you didn't really see yoga studios. And then all of a sudden there was this big boom of the studios and a lot of the fitness industry embracing. And so when we look at where we're at, there's been so many changes that have happened. And I wanna kind of start in the 2010s because as the rise of studios occurred, so did the popularity of yoga. People became a lot more open to utilizing it, whether it's as adjunct to fitness or to their mental health, or just to dealing with stress of the day-to-day -day stuff we deal with. Um, and as the population evolves, so do we. We evolve in the industry. 
And so now there's more conversations in the 2010s talking about the health benefits of yoga and you start seeing yoga therapy come on the scene. You start seeing that it's being used in different uh, vicinities for managing chronic illness and so forth. But there's still this, you know, the, the fitness element of it is so popular and people love it because you also have the community element, which is what makes studios so special is fostering that community and those spaces. Um, but by obviously, if you if you've been if you were teaching before 2020, you saw after the pandemic, a lot of studios ended up closing or there was a lot of changes that happened. But I want to kind of flip this as the opportunity that occurred in 2020 is that the studentship expanded while it felt like the yoga industry was getting hurt because of the studios um, being limited and not being able to deliver in the studio. What was also happening is that people were, more and more people were actually engaging in yoga. There was a lot more people doing yoga at home. And this had helped socialize yoga even more into the mainstream. And so when we see this, online cl classes became popular. Oh, y'all see my cat. By the way, my cats sometimes make an appearance and so we'll just be lighthearted here. But anyways, um, so online classes are popularized and that more people became interested in yoga and began practicing yoga. But then that also leads us to now that the crisis of the pandemic led to another crisis that we're facing today, which is the mental health crisis. And most of us came to yoga because it felt good in the body. Maybe there was a physical reason, whether you were trying to work with navigating pain or to just make your body healthier. Usually it's because of the physical that we begin our yoga practice. But what we discover in the practice is the feeling after, right? The emotional upbeatness, the mental clarity. And those mental health benefits are often what has us coming back to the mat again and again. And so naturally, as we look at the crisis that's evolving with mental health and the conversations that are happening more and more on the mainstream about needing to address mental hygiene and mental health, what we're seeing is a huge opportunity for yoga to be an adjunct and to be in service to that. And so I'm talking about this because I want you guys to see the opportunities and where yoga can be beyond the studio, right? Beyond just the traditional ways that we have seen yoga play out in the industry. So we're seeing now that their mental health is needing this. And yoga itself is multimodal. It is multifaceted. There are so many different deliveries of our work. Sure, there's a 60 minute service that we can deliver, whether it's in a group class or one-on-one, -on -one. but there is also meditation, mindfulness, education, group experiences, using it as adjunct in not just mental health, but other domains, which I will talk more about here soon. And so it's getting you guys to widen the perspective of where can yoga serve not just the industry itself, but our population health and our society, especially as people are looking for these different solutions that you probably offer, <laughs> that you are the medicine to. So I want to just look at some data here for a moment. Um, so in 2020, you know, we I just talked about that studentship expanded. You know, I will be honest with you guys. So I lead yoga teacher trainings and in 2019, and I started leading them in 2016, and I do a lot of mentorship for yoga teachers and a lot of um, like coaching and different things in that realm. But before 2020, so in 2019, if you would have asked me my opinion about online yoga classes, online teacher trainings, all of that, it would have been the loudest no. And I was very convicted by that until in 2020, we were forced to, like, we had, we had cohorts. We had a lot of stuff happening at the studios. I owned three different studios and ran the first yoga studio to open on a military base at the time. So I was navigating my private practice, a studio in central San Antonio, and a studio out, studio out in Bernie, along with our work with the military. And you know, the, the reality is, is as everybody is shifting, as the collective had to go through the pandemic, the resources, we didn't want those to stop. So I really sat down and I saw, you know, I saw a lot of people, everybody jumps online, right? And I asked myself, what are ways to make this really unique and really aligned to my heart? And I, I like to invite you guys to think about whenever you're delivering anything, 
if you look at all your services, reflect on how you would want to receive. This has been huge for me creating things that are in deep alignment and natural for me. And when I say that, what I mean by that is I don't burn out. I love it. I have the best time doing it. And it's because it's fun for me because if I was receiving that, I would love that. Like it, there's this giving from this place of authenticity when you allow yourself to problem solve or reflect on ways that is organic or is what you would desire to receive on the other side. So um, this, this statistic is really interesting that the yoga equipment demand increased by 156%. And the reason that's interesting to me is because that tells me that a lot of people have mats, bolsters, blankets, blocks, all these things in their home. And sure, it might have been just for the hype of that time, but now we know people have access to some of these things that they could have in a studio. So there's another reason that online services can still be a benefit. And if you look at it, I know we're all kind of getting back into the studios and back into the community. However, the accessibility of online or using different things online can be an adjunct resource to what you deliver in person which then elevates the value of what you can provide people. And so um, I want to invite you guys to see that where could you be possibly overlooking the opportunity to create online resources? And, I, and I'm going to get into when we talk about more arenas, why this is relevant, because you can build partnerships using these resources. It's also something that you can create, but then you don't have to keep doing and expending your energy on. Because once it's created, like even this webinar, you know, tomorrow I might be cooking dinner and someone's watching it, right? So our, our work and our mission can continue even if our voice, if we're not physically present or there. So I also want to point out with this, if, some, if you are feeling this like, oh, but I'm not good at technology. Here's the thing. None of us were until we started like, we were like sat down and had that awkward, awkward moment of learning how. And just like when you first started teaching yoga in the first place, didn't you have that awkward like getting used to it, getting in the feel of it? And as you allowed yourself, every time you survived that discomfort of I don't know, you learned more. I have ran my business for the, over the past decade, uh, <laughs> building a plane while flying it, learning as I go. And every time I don't know, I see it as a fertile opportunity to grow. I'm like, yes, okay, curriculum. And it has made me a better businesswoman. It has made me a better leader because of the curiosity when I don't know. So I wanna invite you guys to explore that within yourself. And this is just one way. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna talk more about this and some other ways as well. But allow yourself to lean into that curiosity. And online is not either or. Because a lot of my work, I have hybrid, I do things in person. But then I also am able to scale it. So I want to show you guys this picture here. So what you see is me teaching. This is a group of soldiers who are in a recovery process. They're trying to rehab so they don't get kicked out of the military. Um, and I do a lot of work with the military in this, in the rehabilitation realm and the mental wellness realm. But what happened, so, you know, I'm going ev almost every or twice a week. I was getting up at like 3.30 a.m. to get there to teach at 5 a.m. for basic training. And that's a lot of work. After three months, four months of doing that nonstop, you know, and then as more units were hearing about it, we had the idea of recording myself doing these classes. So I have recorded these eight classes with the military, and it allowed me to be in more than one place at once. So what happened was, is then it ended up scaling where at, during PT in the morning, they're able to use a projector and use specific classes based off of whatever their unit needs are. And I don't have to be there, but they're still getting the yoga. So it's an adjunct resource and then it's really great in collaboration. And that's just with the military. I have this with a lot of other things and I'm gonna show you guys here. I'm gonna be gifting you guys some gems here soon, um, but it, it offers people to get a flavor of your mission and the work you do, even if you're not able to physically deliver. So I encourage you guys to play with that and explore that. Um, the next thing is the mental health crisis. So in the mental health field, if you've been paying attention, they're, they're talking a lot about somatic interventions, using the body, mindfulness, body cognitive based therapies. Mental health is embracing yoga and mindfulness. and 
maybe they're not calling it yoga entirely, but they're looking for the work that we deliver. And there's a lot of opportunity to collaborate, to educate, to, um, because even just by you educating mental health professionals or partnering with a local mental health clinic or other mental health clinics in your area to be a referral. There's so many ways to engage in the field of mental health right now and be adjunct, be part of an integrative team. I'll use an example. Right now we have a partnership with a mental health clinic that serves first responders and law enforcement. And we have a little yoga studio inside their clinic that as adjunct, if they would like to, they can have one-on-one sessions as well to do the somatic work. So they're able to get therapy, but then they're also able to go and have yoga class or go and have their different group experiences. And it's evolved to being such a beautiful partnership. And so you can explore ways in your own community to collaborate with professionals who are interested in this stuff. And maybe you are a mental health professional and you're like, yeah, this is why I'm even here because I'm interest- I understand the value of mind-body medicine. So this is expanding and it's a very exciting time to be part of that conversation because um, if yoga teachers aren't part of that conversation, you know, it's... It's not that we there's going to be this level, because again, I work with the military, so talk about sterilizing the cozy, right? <laughs> but, you know, when we look at how the mental health industry is taking things, you know, being able to educate mental health providers like, hey, if you have a patient with anxiety, it might not be wise to just say do meditation, but this is a way you can get them in their bodies. But we can, So we can give them these tools, context, and information to help elevate those practices and build those po- partnerships and job opportunities for you guys. Um, the I will tell you the most popular request I get almost weekly, sometimes several times a week, is regarding mental health. And a lot of our students, if we take a temperature on the collective and our students who are coming to our classes, they are trying to nourish mental hygiene. And so your work with mental hygiene can be can elevate and really grow, especially now because that's a population need. And there's a lot of organizations, companies looking for this kind of stuff. So and then this next one is profit margin for studio owners has gotten smaller as rent source. So if you're a studio owner, um, <laughs> I understand. I and I ended up, I'll just share again, personal experience. So I had to really look at what are my gifts. So when I when after the pandemic and all that stuff and navigating the studios and all the things, I really anchored down in what is my medicine to the world? What is my mission and what are my gifts that I want to share? And having a lot of colleagues who are yoga studio owners, I realized I wanted to find ways to support them. There's no need for me, and this is just me, there's no need for me to be having a studio with group classes. My my real medicine and like what I love to do is I like to see people in their bigness. I like to educate people. I like to inspire people. And so I wanted to f- really reposition my work to be something that houses self-care and education to empower other people. And what I realized is I, de- I didn't necessarily need a physical space. I'm also a military spouse. So Um, There's unique challenges within that in itself that having uh, brick and mortar spaces just long term wasn't the best for me and letting that go was the best decision I made because it allowed me to really put energy into widening my work in the world and really fostering my craft deeper into what's organic for me versus trying to keep up with, you know, what I originally thought it meant to be a successful yoga teacher. So I just shared that. Um, and that's just my experience. So, and maybe you're, you do, you're like, I house these beautiful experiences in my spaces. So acknowledge that and elevate that in your community that you do this work in whatever way that is. So it's about, but this leads me to say, because profit margins are getting smaller for studio owners, and this is just for, if you're not a studio owner, this is for everybody can connect with this. It's a season of getting creative. This is this era that we're in, this little time frame, whatever we're dealing with. I mean, it is forcing us to get really creative on how we serve, which is why I'm planting some seeds with you guys before we get into the deeper stuff on what to do to elevate or, you know, expand your your work is to really see we'll wear. Like, we're, let's, we're just going to widen out because – Oftentimes when we're so narrow focused on this is the way to do it, this is the right way, when we're obsessed with being correct, 
over being creative and being right over being just curious and available. We may miss opportunities that are more connected to our heart versus rational in the mind. And so being open to that and getting creative. So studios got to get creative. Partnerships, working with nonprofits, working with local places. There's a lot of scenarios where they can't come to you. So how can you offer things that allow you to partner with them and be there with them? So getting creative, and we'll talk more on that. Adjunct resources. Are there adjunct resources? So I'll use an example. I'm So I'm a poet, and I love writing, and that's a big thing that infuses my work as a yoga teacher and how, how I teach in general. If you take a class with me, it's like, I don't know. I don't even know. Um, but because I write poetry, I wanted to blend that with my love for yoga, and I created an intention deck, an oracle deck. And it's a product that I sell, but it helps teach people how to embody the yoga practice or sorry, embody intention into their yoga practice. And it's super juicy. And it's an adjunct resource that not only can I give away for different gifts, but it's also something that can, it's just, you don't have to come practice with me all the time, but you get the card deck and you can practice with yourself and be connected to yourself. And then that's a way that my work can serve beyond just one narrow focused modality or, or technique or way. So also education, widening your education and workshop services. What do you want to tell the world? What do you want to teach people? You know, yoga teaching, yes, is asana and breath work and those things, but it's also how we concentrate, how we practice paitiara or with the way we focus our attention, intention, You know, you get into the yoga philosophy and that we will be here for hours if I start giving ideas on yoga philosophy because there's just so much, there's so much you guys. And that's why if you follow what you're in, you're lit up by and that excites you, those are breadcrumbs and they're taking you somewhere and to pay attention. And I'll probably talk more on that. So, um, and then lifestyle medicine and integrative medicine, mind, body medicine, just so you guys know, in the medical community, yoga yoga is part of integrative care. It's part of integrative medicine. And so we should be in these arenas, you know, being part of lifestyle medicine summits. How can we be involved in lifestyle medicine? Because right now providers are getting board certified in this and there's, they're needing more education in those domains or going and guest speaking at universities in your local area. You know, get creative on ways that you can be part of the conversation because just by being part of a conversation, I mean, I guess you could say that's part of marketing, right? Like it's letting people know you exist and then giving something to share with them. And then maybe you have an adjunct resource that you can deliver that starts to foster a relationship with them. One of the biz- biggest mistakes yoga teachers make is that we sit here, we launch something, and we just think people are going to come. You got to foster relationship and you got to foster trust. And so by showing up and sharing the things that you know to be true or that you've studied and learned and inviting people into those conversations, it can really oper- open up opportunities for you. And mind body medicine, yoga is mind body medicine. So that whole domain is a big world. And Maybe I'll see you at the Integrative Medicine Conference. I don't know. So come get involved in those things because there's a lot there, especially professionally. And this leads me to point out that yoga instructors who specialize in holistic medicine earn 93% more than average base salary for yoga teachers. So, And then yoga instructors with time management skills earn 67% more. So... There's the realm of yoga teachers who do it for passion and it's beautiful and it's meaningful and that's perfect. But for those who are really wanting to level up in the professional side of it and serve and let this be your main source of income, the time management and your intentionality behind that is a non-negotiable. Being able, I remember years ago, um, the, the moment where somebody, it was a, a, a dear friend of mine, she said, you know, if you want to, she said, you need to get your ducks in a row. If you want to say you're a business owner, you got to act like a business owner. And I, it was really like, oh my goodness, yes. And, and we'll talk more about this, about what houses your business, taxes, and I'm, we're not going to go too deep, but I'm going to plant some seeds because being able to manage our time, our professionalism, and be clear about what you're doing is going to make you so precise and effective. So... I want to talk about the unspoken issue on why yoga teachers are struggling in business. And the first thing I want to say is 
the part of this is like the it's almost like the world is kind of moving faster than necessarily the the yoga training arena because as more opportunities are opening up there is a gap in educating teachers on business and how to establish professionalism oftentimes there's only like one or two hours allocated and i want to acknowledge that when teacher trainings are training for the intention of their trainees to work for them this can lead to some limitations and again these are things that i have seen and i want to invite us to just identify within ourselves or if you are providing this kind of stuff to just really consider because we see in the yoga industry especially in local communities that there can be struggles around scarcity and the reason that happens is if the, for example if the studio is training the teacher to work for them right the intention is even if they didn't, because you legally technically can't be like, you can only work for me. You have to hire them. Like, But th there was this hope. They're going to work for them. And then when the teacher starts to explore ways to actually earn a, a living or to expand out, then all this weird stuff starts to happen. We need to clear that. We need to outgrow that. We need to stop that. We need to really begin to look at our own craft and explore how we are edifying the community. And then when we are teaching just to train people to teach in our studio – and we're not going into the embodiment of professionalism. So this is things like, obviously you guys, poaching and soliciting other studios, uh, students are, that's not, it's not, it's not gonna create any abundance for anybody. It's not pleasant. The, but if you can learn the skills of how do you grow your own community or if you're gonna teach at a lot of different studios or you're gonna be in different networks, how to be respectful and then also part of clarity you're clear on your work you're clear on what you deliver and what you do and then that doesn't it, there's no confusion about where you're at and I always look at it as I mean I live in San Antonio area right there's three million people and where I live and I get it if you live in kind of a rural area and it's not like that um, it's gonna be a little different but again creativity but there's no, there's so many people in the world, and this is why also online, because it's infinite online. There's so many people who need this work, you guys. So many people are suffering right now with mental health and a lot of different struggles from stress-related illness and so on. There's not enough yoga teachers to serve. And the more clear we, each of us are on the octave that we deliver or the tune that we share with the world, then people can find us a lot more naturally and we stay in our, our craft and we deliver that versus being in, because we didn't learn professionalism and we didn't learn skills, tangible skills, how to run business and price things and so forth, then that way we're not, um, we're not trying to grab from everywhere else, but we're actually able to go collaborate, partner, and do the mission. So I want to point that out um, that the, about the professionalism. And I'll, I'll probably speak more on that. Um, okay, gatekeeping information. A lot of trainings have gatekeeped, but I will say there's a lot of great resources online, and part of why you're here today is to get that information. And really going back to what I was saying with there's in a lot of trainings, there's gatekeeping and preventing competition, which is such a shame because then you create yoga teachers who were all confused. That was me when I first started. I didn't even know. I'm like, oh my gosh, my business card. Like I didn't know anything and I had to learn. And that's why I'm a big advocate for there's all, if there's a will, there's a way and to give yourself compassion so you can learn and you can learn those things. Um, and then socializing, the socialization that it's not spiritual to receive income from yoga teaching. I think that if that's your spiritual conviction, then beautiful, let that be your spiritual conviction. However, I think that the by adopting this overall, there is a karmic exchange. So for all you yoga teachers as professionals, there is a karmic exchange when you are giving. There, If we're always giving and there's no receiving of any sort, that can create a lot of imbalances. And when you look in history, you know, we, it's the West that has modernized these group classes and a lot of the ways we do it, but traditionally it was done student to teacher and the student housed the teacher, fed the teacher. Like there was always a karmic exchange. And so I want to invite you guys to begin to really unpack and we'll talk briefly about money wounds but the money wounds and our stories about receiving resource and being supported can really end up not only it's it's about being able like if you can't eat and you're stressed out all the time because you can't put a roof over your head how well can we actually deliver the mission 
how well can we give from a place I have and really serve people if we aren't being cared for ourselves and we can't, <laughs> you know, like keep the lights on, right? The lights so we can practice. So I really want to invite us to reflect on that. And But your convictions are your convictions. However, if you don't align with that and you're, you want to um, – really deep in this recognizing that this work is so needed in the world and it needs to be valued and when you look at the medical arena and the need for these prevent preventative proactive wellness interventions that they're looking for and that there's a value on that and you know I think you're worthy of like your time's worthy your wisdom's worthy your investment into your education you deserve to have a return on that and so you can continue to give more Everything that I've done on the milit with the military, a lot of that is volunteer. And the studio that we donated and all those things, it was because my, my students and my community, the resources that I was able to get, I moved it to the mission. I was able to move my mission forward because of these resources. And it's made huge impact. That yoga studio that I had opened is now, I, through 2020 and 2021, I worked really hard and got it part of the DOD system. And now there's actual salary paid jobs for yoga teachers on military bases to have a meditation center. It's called, that. that's the one that I started was the Vogel Meditation Center. You could look it up. And then also being able to volunteer for pilot programs for the military that has now impacted Big Army where they're implementing they're calling it tactical mobility, but yoga and mindfulness into basic training AIT. That's because with resource, you can use that to go and make impact and do things and show up. And so I just want to share that perspective on this. So now let's get into a wider lens. Oh, and that picture right there, that's a, yeah, that's soldiers doing yoga with my yoga video. Um, so, all right, let's get into the wider lens of this and Mental health, we will be here all day. Honestly, I could teach on how to serve these arenas all day, which is what I do for um, with, with other stuff. So, um, But what I'll share with you guys, because there's so much with this, is, and I mentioned some earlier, is to really look at ways can you educate, can you provide resources, can you get involved with supporting the mental health field, um, and there's a lot that can happen there. Uh, healthcare addressing the stress-related illnesses. You know, 75% of illnesses can be preventable or reversed. And so getting involved with the proactive side of things and proactive wellness, exploring opportunities there, working with local clinics or local family medicine practices, chiropractors, PTs, uh, integrative providers such as massage therapists and other providers. Getting It's just about sitting down and getting creative of, do you know someone already? And maybe you could just be a referral. Uh, in a few years ago with my studio, I actually went to clinics. I had a postcard with some of my information at the bottom, but it was uh, for refer patients to yoga, but what styles? And I listed the styles and what is great for referral. So if you have somebody with high blood pressure, it might be great for them to do more of a restorative practice. So it was just, it was education. Like a lot of my postcards, things I give out, it has education on it because then it's valuable to them and it can be resourceful. And if they want more, they can find me. Um, across military bases, we have, I have a thing that it gets disseminated. It's a recovery plan. It's stress reduction and how then how to energize yourself. And it's share, it's all over um, the hospital here, Bamsi. And it's something that people have a resource, but then it's like Mel Marie Yoga at the bottom, right? So think about when you're sharing the, your work and sharing your mission in these places, you always gotta think how is it relevant to them? And that's a big mistake that we'll make. We'll be go, look what I do, look what I do, versus going, how can I serve you? How can I help? Is it even relevant for me to serve you? And then that opens the door for a conversation. So looking at ways that you could collaborate um, athletics and industry partners. So athletics, I just want to point out that the younger generations, um, there's a lot of issues with, because of more of a sedentary lifestyle, they are at higher risk for skeletal muscular problems and lower limb injuries. So when it comes to athletics or like police academies, uh, firefighter academies, these places where these kids are coming in to train, 
Yoga offers uh, benefits for bone density and resilience with the structure of the body. By the way, I think she introduced, I'm a yoga therapist too, so I like the, the, the functional potential stuff is something I'm really, I love talking about. But we have, a, just yoga does what yoga does. So you could go to those places and help with athletic departments or going and helping with the industry as far as public health education goes, getting involved in schools. Schools are looking for mindfulness. I mean, again, the list, this is to just get you guys thinking of all these different places in your community that you can start having conversations, collaborating, and going and leading yoga. And then and there's sometimes it's volunteer, sometimes there's a budget. So they're able to pay you. Um, sometimes it might take a pilot program. But it all builds your resume and it builds experience and it can unfold. I mean, you never know where things can open you. So especially if you're feeling stuck right now. So looking at those industry partners or universities, like I'd said, not just athletics, but universities in general. They're looking for mental hygiene for their students. Is there a way that you could collaborate, offer a special membership, maybe go in and teach? So building those relationships and then fatigue and low productivity at work. Corporate wellness, you guys. It, it, I'm telling you, if you can find whoever is doing HR departments, wellness directors, and just exploring where there is an opportunity to connect, and this is where online stuff, webinars and workshops, guest speaking, and oftentimes it's through those things that you build your community and people learn about your studio or learn about yoga with you. And that's why when we get into some of this work we're about to dive into, you got to have a place for them to go as well. So I wanted to share this. I know that um, for a lot of people who are not into yoga and are not in the yoga industry, the yoga industry can look very confusing because there's tons of yoga teachers, but they don't realize that there's a lot of different styles and how do they know like, okay, well, what's the right person, right yoga, etc. So for us, we have to remember that and recognize the importance of going to them, to go to the people, go to the places, send the email. And listen, if you get rejected, it's protection. You have to trust, you have to trust that you are being positioned for your highest good. That if there's a no, it's because you didn't want it anyways. And it might circle back months later. That has happened so many times to me where I'll, set, I'll reach out and then a year later, I'm like, oh my gosh. And I get an email and they're like, hey, we, 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 saw, we, we know you contacted a while back, but now we're ready. Okay, so it's, it's okay if they don't respond. I think um, there's just so much with us getting, and we'll, we're going to talk more. I'm going to give you guys tons of things to do on your own to deepen into this work, to release that, in, that shame or the fear around those things. Because if anything, like there are people out there looking for your work. They're looking for your vibe. And if you don't tell people you exist, no one's going to tell them that you exist. You have to tell the world. You have to tell your community that, hey, this is here. This is here. This is, and give them the context how you benefit and serve. If you can give them context of the relevancy, an example, I will look at metrics. I will talk to if it's, whether it's like, um, like I work, I do some work with, uh, mental health and law enforcement because of our studio right it's like what are the issues did this with the military what are the issues and then exploring and getting creative on how yoga how can i my scope of practice how can mindfulness help them and then you propose an idea and magic can happen so but we got to at least like send the email go and say hello drop the flyers off and take that action so with this being said though as we kind of move into this next component of the workshop I just want to rec uh, acknowledge that all of us are unique and all of us are very different in the way that we we operate and the way that we serve. And something that has transformed my life is doo -doo -doo, human design and joy -tish. So maybe you've heard of human design. Human design is a modality that incorporates other mo all these little mo all these different modalities to help understand our energetic blueprint. And I want to give you guys, if you're interested in this, you could Google because we don't have time to go all into it. You could Google, Google what is human design and kind of learn about it because when you understand your battery and how you work, it's not only just this radical relief, but then you can really use your organic, like how you operate, when you operate, how you make choices. Like do you make choices by feelings or are you somebody that just like in the moment? It, it's very helpful. And, and I share this with you guys because self-knowing, 
it, you know, the, the, the practice of yoga is about union with ourselves and understanding ourselves to decrease suffering and stop trying to fit a circle in a square, right? When we can really understand our nature. And this is going to lead me to talk about joy tish. So in yoga, right, you have hatha yoga, the yoga that we're all really used to, but then you also have Ayurveda. And they say that, you know, yoga is for the mind, Ayurveda is for the body, and then you have joy tish or Vedic astrology, and that is for the soul. It helps us understand karma, our samskaras, and our dharma. And it also helps us work with the cycles and seasons and curriculum we're learning. It is a phenomenal modality. And I'm so grateful I learned about this earlier on in my career because it is part of the yoga scope and the yoga the yoga world. Um, and they used it. It was actually asanas and stuff came after. They used it to understand like where are the imbalances, what do we need to pacify, and then using Ayurveda to help heal the body yoga to help address the mind and so when you have when you understand joy tish and you start playing in that as well with self-knowing you can use this because because at the end of the day as a business owner you are the center of it like if you don't wake up to do it and to be accountable towards it it's not going to move and it is deep responsibility to serve people and to provide this work to people and we have to be accountable and aware of ourselves and, and recognizing too that in yoga, it's an ever evolving journey. And so you get to always be in this journey of learning new things about yourself. So what I wanted to give you guys is if you, in, in your handout, it says this too, if you wanna go watch the Human Design and Vedic Wisdom Workshop, that's free access. Uh, this is something that we only give to our trainees in our community, but I wanted to bless you guys so you can nerd out, do some self-knowing, go get your body graph from online. Your handout will tell you the instructions and watch it and then learn and play and it kind of do some self-reflection with it. It's so interesting. If you love, like if you love finding out your dosha and those kind of things, this is fun, right? Like, uh, and it's, it's really mind blowing. It's human design has really transformed how I lead. And then um, I wanted to gift you guys. This is my friend and family discount that I give for Vedic astrology sessions because I do practice Joy Tish and I, I uh, teach Joy Tish as well. It's part of our yoga therapy school. Um, you, If you want a session to be introduced for business, I'm giving you guys a, a special discount because I just, Joy Tish has changed my life learning about uh, the how to deal with samskaras and the cycles that we go through. Okay, so that's for you. Now I want to move into Elevate. If it is meaningful, it is sustainable. Dr. Dean Ornish said this, and I think it's true for our work. If it's meaningful to you, it's sustainable. If it's meaningful for your clients, they are going to heal through things and it becomes sustainable. They can, you know, the maintenance of the practice is really what takes us into vitality. And so I want to kind of go through these. Your What you'll see in your handout is at the bottom, there's like tons of questions to exercise you through. And because I think sometimes it's just having the right question given to us. And then like, whoa, the clarity shows up on the answer that we've been looking for, right? So I give you guys tons of things on there. But for the sake of our time together remaining, ground first is getting clear on your mission, getting clear on what you love and why you do what you do. You know, when we are clear about what we're even doing, like I, I love working with the military. I love educating. This is the example of the what informed my choices when I said, you know, maybe I, it, for me, it's time to let go of these physical locations and really look at how I can nourish yoga teachers, nourish the yoga industry, pioneer and be involved in integrative medicine for yoga teachers of the future. I'm intrigued by that and that's natural for me. So it allowed me to really shift my mission is also to help people create a life they don't need to escape from. So I'm interested in modalities going through, using yoga to go through the mind to access, or sorry, going through the body to access the mind. So, um, and then the antidote to fear is curiosity. It's just curiosity. I recommend read the book, The Kleshas by Deborah Adele. It just came out. It's phenomenal. If you love the yamas and yamas, you're going to love The Kleshas by Deborah Adele. Work with fear, get curious about it, dance with it, flirt with it, learn what it's showing you about yourself because this is huge as a business owner is that we manage our, that when we go and going, why? And it's part of self, personal development and self-development. 
Um, internal alignment keeps expression flowing and organic delivery organic. So there's inorganic energy and organic energy. Inorganic energy is where I'm going, I'm pulling all my inspiration, all my things from outside of myself. And that's where we burn out and we're always dependent on like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Where organic energy is sourced from within because it's things you're passionate about. It's things you're curious about. It's that like if you, I love flowers. So if you ever train with me or work with me, where, well, you can tell. I love flowers. They're all over this thing. So um, flowers chakra bouquet making events like fun like bringing my love for yoga with my love for other things and fusing it into experiences and so it's allowed me to create unique experiences or ideas to help bring things together for people that then I don't burn out because I'm doing things that I love and I'm excited to teach on it so grounding into that grounding into well what houses your business a lot of yoga teachers are like okay I'm looking for job opportunities but if you have making sure that you have the website, that you have your S Corp or LLC or the, you know, the systems in place and your handout is going to kind of guide you in some things with this, um, ensuring that you know what houses your business. Like where is it the website? Do you have a space? Like get all that stuff clear so when they ask questions, you have really solid grounded answers. Um, and to, to brave learning new things. And I already said, you are the center of your business. So you have to make those choices and explore. Uh, the next thing is to nourish. Creativity is problem solving. And to really look at when you feel like you're at those, you're having this pressure of like, I'm not good enough, or there's an issue with your creativity, or you're like, I don't know what to do about this issue, inviting you to like play and get creative and look at, I love the movie Dead Poets Society about standing on desks, <laughs> or when he says like stand on desk, right? Like stand on desk, ask questions, get curious, play, and see if you can do something different. Are you doing something one way? Or maybe ask for mentorship or support, but pay attention to reframe because it's the mind that will anchor us or kind of sink us into like, it's this is a problem we can't solve. Everything is figure outable. Um, and nourishing that. Also, we talked already a little bit about choosing creativity over being correct. Um, to allow you, that's where your authenticity plays and comes out. Also, really releasing the pressure that comes from responsibility. All responsibility is is your ability to respond. It's your ability to respond. So releasing the pressure and just going, okay, well, how can I make choices? One practice I always say is if you know how much you need a month to survive or that feels comfortable for you, work backwards with your services. Know how many people you would need in, in a membership or whatever. And honestly, it, sometimes by raising prices or doing like some specialized things, all you need is one or two people and then like the bottom line's covered and then you can go and play from there. So exploring your responsibility or your ability to respond to the responsibilities that are showing up. I give you guys some uh, tools and self-care for that. Um, your desire expands you. Your desire is what widens you when you're like, oh, I want that or I like excited about that or I, I desire to serve this. It widens you, but it's your artistry that brings it in. It's the how you do it that brings it in. And I want to talk to you guys about pauses. Just because you're in, a, if you're in a slow season or things feel slow with your work, it does not mean that it's something's wrong with you or you're not being productive or that this is a problem. And I know you might be like, what? But hear me out. There, when you think about why we meditate, why do we meditate? Because there, so there's something called potential energy and kinesthetic energy. Potential energy is like how far it could go. Kinesthetic energy is how far it does go. So when you think about a slingshot, if you pull a slingshot back, right, the, the further I pull it back and the longer I hold it, it builds potential energy. So when I let it go, it goes far. But if I'm doing this, like, loop, doop, it's like flopping and like land, like it's not going far, right? So when I, when we're in meditation, right, we build up potential energy. But it's also the same thing for with our work. That when you're in a slow season, 
you are deepening into whether it's getting creative, reviving your energy. Sometimes we do need to rest and, and allow our battery to refill, right? Prawn you. we need those things to nourish. So when you are in these slower seasons, it's because it's time to plug your battery back into charge and then get creative and get curious and explore. And, and that's the most productive thing you can do because then when the busy season happens again, you're ready, you're clear, you're precise, and it goes far because the kinesthetic energy is now very potent. So, all right, I have a few more things I wanted to share with you guys. This is outreach. Um, want to give this uh, this activity to you. It's in the handout of listing listing five people or things that you really want to collaborate with or you're interested in working with. Write them down. Write them down and find out the contact. I walk you through the exercise because honestly, if you just get clear about where you want to go, it's amazing what can unfold for you. Um, because partnerships and collaborations do help us grow in our communities. And I'm not talking about necessarily yoga studios and yoga teachers. It's about the community you want to serve. So if you are really interested in working with kids, look at the nonprofits in your areas that work with kids. Look at the schools that, work, that have kids. Charter schools are a lot easier to get into because they usually have funding for, you know, to bring stuff like this in. Um, being able to identify, because of all the other work you've done so far, but getting clear what you love, what houses your work, what do you deliver, you can go and begin to build these relationships. Relationships are key. And being able to get involved in the community and sharing this work is part of the reason why we even do this, because we want we want people to know about it and these inner resources that are accessible to us. So building partnerships and recognizing that you're selling the solution that has been put on your heart, you know, and when you sell something in your work, sell it the way you want to buy, you would buy something. So like every, if you, this is homework, go look at all your services and ask yourself if you were on the receiving end, would you, does, would you buy it? Does it feel really good? Like um, if anybody, I'll just share. So when someone pays for any of my services, they get like this notification and it's a gratitude practice to come back to their heart and thank themselves for investing in themselves, right? Like I add all these little fluffy little things because for me, I love the cozy, I love I love the details and so I sell the way I buy. And if you get creative, it might help you clean up some things or even clarifying what you're talking about because I've sometimes I talk too much. So I'm like, okay, gotta simplify, right? Um, and then the price is the exchange. It's the karmic exchange. So when you hesitate with life, it hesitates back. And that's something that I learned a few years ago. And I have just, like I catch myself. When I'm hesitating, I notice that it hesitates back. And when I'm in hesitation, that's an invitation to go back to clarity. That I'm off with clarity. So deepening into that. And then your voice. Self-trust is so essential. And um, there's some activities on that handout to help you guys develop that because oftentimes the reason we don't use our voice is because we don't trust our voice. It's, and I see this as a teacher trainer when I'm working with people. This Most people can do a yoga class. They can teach asana. But when it comes to using their voice, that's where we get all jagged. So deepening and working with our voice. and then and, But it happens when we're very clear about what we're delivering. Um, and I want to also just say that the way you put yourself out there, the way you market, the, your brand, all of those things matter because it's the portfolio of your mission. And so asking, does this represent my mission? Does this tell the story of the impact that or what I'm, I'm doing? Does it tell the story? And if you, you know, if you zoom out of life, all it is is a bunch of choices, right? Which leads us to expand. Um, to envision asks us to, you know, when we look at taking action and expanding things in our life, it is through action. Action is the only witness to belief. And if you can find ways to just make a list, so I, a lot of my back end stuff, I have a list and I go and I knock it out. I do the actions or I go show up and it's the action. I think we can overthink ourselves out of building relationships and trying different things. Sometimes when I have idea, I just put on my calendar and like I tell literally with even the card deck, right? I just had, I told the world that I was going to do it and, and I was like, okay, now I got to do it. 
but it was really about me holding myself accountable. So finding the ways that helps you stay accountable to that. So with that being said, as we wrap up, <laughs> I, I want to um, share with you guys, I'm gifting you guys a lot of fun. Today was like super iceberg and I am going to be gifting because your medicine is needed in the world. I am giving the Biogi community complimentary access to our business program. So I'm giving this to you for free, but that means there's no mentoring. You're just going to get the videos, but they should be good enough to really get you going and really map things out, getting clear, reflect like a lot of the stuff on the handout to optimize that. So you have that. If you want to go get access, get it now. It's yours and just enjoy. Um, but if you do want mentoring, I'm giving you guys an $800 scholarship to any of our training programs. So if you want to learn anything from any of our yoga teacher trainings to becoming a yoga therapist to learning Vedic astrology or meditation, this is a gift that I'm giving that will expire in March, but we always have our partnership with Biogi where you guys get a $500 scholarship. But if you want to take advantage of the $800 scholarship, uh, just contact me and I am so excited. And this includes redefined this includes the business program mentoring and our training experiences so with that being said thank you all here's my contact and if you want to learn more about our work go on youtube and look up live like you practice because we have a whole docu-series that like models everything i'm talking about so go have some fun with that and thank you lizzie for having me and everybody for being here <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Melissa. That was really great. I think you packed a ton of great things to think about and getting that process flowing, that brainstorming flowing. And I hope everyone utilizes the handout because I know it's like kind of a step-by-step -step thing. So that's really exciting. Um, and we're getting a lot of thank yous. Not a lot of questions came in, um, but if anyone is sticking around for just a minute and has a question, um, feel free to type it in now. I did have one come through. Not sure if you'll be able to answer because it, it might be a little confusing out of context, um, but someone asked, would love to know what avenue slash business you used to have the card deck made? Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I'll just say first of all, you guys, I had no idea how to do it. Okay. So if you're in that moment of like, I want to do this, but I have no idea. So I started, I went on Instagram and I found an artist and then I, I assumed she would know how to do it. She didn't know how to print them. So I was like, great. And then I started looking up, I found a video on YouTube about using Canva to create your card deck. And so I took the art, put it together, made my book on word or whatever but then I had it on Canva and then I found, I found a printer. There's a printer in Colorado actually. And if you email me, I'm happy to share with you who I used, but I self published it and I had it printed and I paid for it to be printed. The, the publishing industry with card deck stuff, I am not an expert on. I'm manifesting that one day. I would love to get picked up by a publisher, but printing them myself and that the person who does it in Colorado, he, he ships it. He's amazing. So it was, it was kind of like, piecing it together to figure out a way to to get it done and and I want to just use this as an example that there it's okay to have like a phase one and a phase two and a phase three to things you're giving birth to in the world because I feel in my heart and I actually I think I have them right here these are my card decks or like some of my cards and I have I believe this is phase one but I'm allowing the path to show me like you know is it picked up by a publisher does this evolve to something else but I invite you guys, if you have something on your heart, to start anyways. So, Lex, who asked that question, if you're still here, make sure to DM Melissa. She's super active and she'll be able to, you know, if you want that connect. Also, someone just asked, where is your card deck available? It's on my website. So melmarieyoga.com. And if you go um, work with Mel, it's on the homepage, but also under work with Mel, you can order it there. So yeah, great. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here. We will add all of the special offers into the post webinar email. So you guys will have access to it there as well. Um, because we kind of went so quick, you might have not have been able to write down that website, but you can check everything out at uh, melmarieyoga.com. She lists everything there. And I think most of the codes are Biogi. We'll keep that information though into 
into the uh, email. But thank you, Melissa, for being here. I think that was really great. And I even took some inspiration from it. Um, so thank you and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Alrighty. Bye. 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 <laughs>